and in crying, cry a whole leopard from your eye. Sad memory. If you angry so mad, ye tongue burst and mouth juice run, gallbladder bitter. When you sick so sad, you place your face in the puddle of a lay-by, waiting for lorry to splash it. And when you are inside the infinite misery jumper, pulling it over and over your head with no hope of ending, cause it's replicating at the waistband, and you never get out, then e welcome. Then ye off welcome in blue jam, blue jam, blue jam. It started in the park as I was lying down and my head hit a hard lump in the ground. I needed to lie down because the chemist had made a mistake and I'm used to a slightly milder antidepressant. When I dug the lump out of the ground, I saw that it was metallic with a handle. It looked a bit like an electric drill. There was a lever for your finger to rest against. I felt I ought to know what it was. I knew I'd seen lots of them in films. I thought the tobacconist might help. I pulled it out while I was buying half an ounce of Golden Virginia and some blue Rizzlers, but he just flew upset and started shouting. He threw money at me, which felt wrong, and told me to leave with whatever I wanted as long as I just get out. I took one ten-pound note and left him to his strange worries. At the bus stop, there was a lady sitting in a way that reminded me of the nurse who used to sit at the front of our class in primary school. Maybe she'd know what this thing was. I fished it out, and she sort of gasped, fell off the seat sideways, and seemed to be asleep suddenly. I thought I'd better do something. I flagged a passing taxi and pulled the sleeping lady into the back with me. The cabbie looked in his mirror. I pulled out the object and was about to ask him about it when he said, I don't want any trouble, where do you want to go? The nocturnal mammal house in the zoo was the only place I really wanted to go at that moment. I use it sometimes to collect my thoughts. When we reached the zoo, I thanked the driver and left the lady in the cab with the tenor in her mouth. I didn't want to mess around with her pockets, and it was open. On my way to Night World, I could hear police sirens. Passers-by were staring at me more than usual. Behind me, some youths were laughing at a masturbating bonobo which had paused to be sick. I ducked through their gaggle and into an open door in the ape block. A keeper was tending his gibbons. Something about my sudden presence in the cage made him run off. Outside, a teacher was telling some children why the gibbon has long arms. Inside, a large gibbon demonstrated by grabbing my object by its nozzle and knocking me about the face. The children screamed. The teacher yelled, form a protective crocodile, and dived to the floor. The gibbon sniffed the instrument, scratched its head, and bang, I remembered what it was. The bullet hit the side of a forlorn elephant which had been repeatedly throwing its lunch of hay in the air. I think she was too depressed to notice. The gibbon was now excited and shot out through the open door. I stumbled after it, feeling a gloomy sense of danger as it headed towards the Mappin Bear terraces. Through the turmoil, I could see a single Asiatic bear rocking dismally from side to side. The gibbon began firing randomly into its pit. As I launched myself into a smothering dive, I heard a loud crack and one of my thighs burst with pain. I rotated my head to see a tranquilizer dart sticking out of my leg and turned back to find myself missing the startled ape 
and plummeting into the bear's enclosure. Rolling around in dust, I began to feel vague. It seemed suddenly very hot, so I took my clothes off. The keeper who had fired the dart was shouting words like no and idiot. I found a roll-up. I lit it, took a deep drag and offered it to the bear. With the cigarette in its mouth, it seemed to look happier. Then I knew I was collapsing because I do know exactly what that feels like. When I woke up, I was in a strange bed. Most beds are strange to me. An advertising executive I know called Susie was sitting next to me watching a television. It showed a wobbly camcorder view of a naked man offering a cigarette to a shaking bear and then falling over. A studio discussion followed these pictures. One man said we should be more careful with children and animals and the unemployed. He was interrupted by another who said rubbish. This is just another tawdry example of the prank generation. He said the man responsible was probably an American. I felt myself wanting to agree with the first man, but actually agreeing with the second, though I've absolutely no idea why. Often at night I hear a crying sound coming out just below my nose. What seems to be the problem? Um, bad pain in my um, armpit. Let's have a look then. It's quite swollen. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is rather bad, isn't it? Okay, you just um, hold your arm right up a moment. I'll just give that a little kiss. Hold still and oh. there we are. All right. Okay. You can push your Carly back on now. Okay. Thanks very much. Thanks. Okay. Bye bye. bye. Right, yes, do come in. Now, what seems to be the trouble? Um, I just seem to have developed this kind of sore patch on my penis. On your penis? Mm. I see. Have you had it long? A mm, couple of days. Mm -hmm. Any other symptoms? Any pain when passing water? No. Any no. discharge? No. I see. Right. Well, then, um, take your trousers down. Let's have a look at it, shall we? Yeah, no. Good. <clears throat> yes. Right, yes, oh, I can see there's a, yes, it is a rather a sore patch there, isn't mm. it? Hmm. All right, well, just hold still a moment. I'm just going to give that a little kiss, all right? There we are. Okay. That's it. Well, that should sort it out for you. Okay. Yeah. Pop back if there's any more trouble. Thanks all very right. much. Okay, then. Bye-bye.
Okay, Bob, if we can get on with this one. We're right, um, this is who we've got. Got the K family that would have tripped to the Middle East. Yes. So. Um, well, they'll need a malaria kiss and um, a hepatitis kiss and yeah. a cholera kiss. They, okay. They're not going to need much cholera out there, but it'll make them feel it's better. It's safer, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fine. Who else? Uh, Mrs. Cole. Yep. Now, she had an allergic reaction last time. That, so was, that, was that Dr. Forrest who saw her last yeah. time? Dr. Forrest and then yourself. Oh, really? Both of them? Yeah. And she reacted against both? Mm. Goodness mm. me. Well, we'd better give her a cross on a piece of paper and put it in an envelope and she can take it out and look mm. at it when she needs to. As and when. Okay. Fine. Um, Mr. Gadsby, now, he's his back's still very badly oh, out. Oh, dear. Disc, so, um... Well... Oh, dear. Well, he'll, he'll need both of us kissing him for about seven minutes today. Yeah. He's in at 11.15, so that, sh that should be all right with you. Yes. Oh, good. You, you, yeah. you booked, yeah, all right. Yeah. Oh, well yeah. done. Good. Mm. That'll give us enough time. Yeah. If that doesn't work, we'll get him booked into the hospital so the consultant can, can give him a kiss under general. Uh, there's been uh, <clears throat> an outbreak of nits in the, the St. Margaret's Primary School. Oh, not so, again. Yeah. So they'll all be needing a kiss on the hair? Mm. And we're going to need some sterile gauze. For that yes, one. well, I don't want any... I don't want any contamination of my moustache, no, so, yeah. No. All right. OK. Um, who else? OK. Oh, Mr Fortune. With the... Mm, the arthritis, yes. Yeah. Well, bring him in and, um... We'll give him a wave, just from the corner. Fine. From the corner of the room. Fine. All right. Fine. What, from about sort of six feet away? Or? Mm, where was it last time? Um, he, he was on the couch and uh, I, I was by the sink. Well, let's just try another one of them. OK. Dr Forrest gave him a home visit the other week and mm. waving at him for about half an hour. It had no mm, effect. No, no but, uh, that. that's, why, that's why I want him brought in here. Mm. I think he'll respond better to, to a wave from you. I think, because you mm. can really concentrate on him. Yeah. All right. OK, Bob. That's okay. a lot, is it? Yeah. Oh, my tea's gone cold. I won't have time for another one. Okay. I'll see you later on. OK, okay thanks okay. a lot. Bye. Chaque fois qu'on essaie de se ranger 
de s'installer tranquille dans un meublé. Dans les trois jours, voilà le tac, tac, tac. Des mitraillettes qui reviennent à l'attaque. Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. Un de ces quatre, nous tomberons ensemble. Moi je m'en fous, c'est pour Bonnie que je tremble. Quelle importance qu'il me fasse la peau. Moi Bonnie, je tremble pour Clyde Barrow. Bonnie and Clyde. Bonnie and Clyde. De toute façon, il ne pouvait plus s'en sortir. La seule solution c'était mourir Mais plus d'un les a suivis en enfer Quand son mort Barrow et Bonnie Parker Bonnie and Clyde Bonnie and Clyde Generally, to start, it's the the one-to-one -one combat. Two 18-month-old babies are placed in the pen, made from old crates or sometimes a plastic paddling pool. They are held apart when the bets are being made. And then the baby man makes his noise. That's the signal that we, uh, we're going to start, and we let them go. And they hit and scratch and kick and do whatever they want to do to maim or stop or floor the other kid. And a good fight, it's very, very clear who's won. There's a kid on the floor in a pool of uh, blood or vomit. And there's a kid running around. And it's the kid who's running around who's the winner. Victoria, that's that's our girl. She's just right in there biting and she does this lip bite thing. She bites the other baby's lips. She has these great false teeth. Uh, we had them made for her so she'd look good in her photos. They have protection. Uh, a kitchen sifter with the handle bent round the back of the head to hold it on. That's good because uh, when they're fighting with knives, you know, we stick um, modeling knives to their hands and feet. Sometimes if a baby is beating another baby real bad, the mother of the baby that's getting the beating will try to rescue the baby and attack the other baby that's beating up on her baby. I think that's pathetic. I mean, if you want to fight a baby, then you can if you pay. An adult will pay quite a lot of money to fight a baby. And uh, some of those adults really, uh, they don't know when to stop. Big uh, Wednesday. He does that. He, he does it, you know, he pays his five dollars to kick the shit out of your the stomach. Head. I mean, for me, I don't, I really, I just don't see how any adult who does that can be quite right. When I watch it, I think, God, you must somehow be pretty spiritually weak or something. I like the screaming bets. We do this thing on the little kids like 
eight weeks old, this guy with a really horrible voice holds the baby's face about six inches away from his mouth and he just screams and screams and screams like a camel, real loud. And then we bet how long the kid will cry for. I don't think it has any effect on the kids, do you? Well, I mean, I would, I would retire Victoria if she killed somebody, if she killed the baby, or if she made a habit of it, or, yeah. You're such a beautiful freak. I wish there were more just like you. You're not like all of What about young people watching television? Well, it, <clears throat> they religiously follow the their sort of pop the image of some pop star or sports um, character. You know. What do you think's going on in their little heads? Well, some of them, by their, should we say, their dress, which they've copied from the various characters in soaps and pop stars and things like that and their mode of speech I shouldn't think there's a lot in there if you could take the brain and you had it there on a plate while these influences were firing into it what figures have we got running around in there from the average day's television little figures running around the East End characters the soap yeah. 
characters. Would they be quite large size? Yeah, but because, because I mean, they, they watch these programs and religiously believe it as, as something real. That How big would the biggest East End character be? Well, I mean, if we're saying a brain is approximately a ball about six or seven inches across, I mean, it would be five, five, four inches across, you know. So if a, an East End star is how tall inside the oh, brain? Four or five inches. How tall is uh, Michael Heseltine before his heart attack? Half an inch or so. What about somebody like Bill Clinton? Mm -hmm. Happy good evening. Um, well, virtually non-existent. He's only about an eighth of an inch high, isn't he? If one could have one character filling the brain, to the exclusion of all others, would you prefer it to be Mother Teresa, Rolf Harris, the Queen Mother, or Mother Teresa too? <coughs> or Mother Teresa with an assistant? Well, I would say Mother Teresa with an assistant. And if that assistant had to be Ronnie Corbett, would you still make that choice? Yeah, because the other... <coughs> if she's got to have an assistant, so be it. It's Ronnie Corbett. Anybody better than Ronnie Corbett? Um... Neil Armstrong? Yeah. Captain Webb, who swam the channel? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I would say somebody of a similar calibre to Mother Teresa, like... Um, St. Francis of Assisi. Well, yeah, somebody from Francis of Assisi or... Um, or even if it was just half of St. Francis of Assisi. Mm. On one of those little boards with wheels on, for people with you no know, legs have, like in the good, the bad... Oh, like in like Porgy and Bessie? Yeah. 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 Half of St. Francis with Mother Teresa. Mm hmm As an alternative to Ronnie Corbett. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Cause the rain will purify When the rain comes New music first 97 to 99 FM Radio 1 Beat. Inflation's hit a two-year high. The rise to 3% is blamed on three elephants, a hippo, a leopard and a giraffe and Cyprus. News beat. The government's set to announce a new concession for students planning to crush their skulls before going to university. A spokeswoman has denied there's a risk to safety. Radio 1 News beat. A huge hunt is the killer of a British tourist. 22-year-old Max Jeffrey was shot dead by a plant who's given him a lift. The main news again tonight. Police in Northumberland yes, have sex with schoolgirls and it's all legal. Radio 1 Newsbeat. I'm suspended. The disco Wiley is slowly chopped to pieces. Sweet lips are clear. Rubbing his genitals in a warm, pulpy mess. Hello, Doctor. Hello. Uh, right, what can we do for you? Um, it's mouth ulcer just uh, on the inside here got it about 10 days it's pretty big it really hurts yes that was rather nasty doesn't it yeah. mm. it doesn't seem to want to go yeah. okay if you can just hold the hold your lip right open like that's a little awkward for me to get in there so i'll just um okay hold it but nice and firm like that's that. that's it yes mm. there i think we'll find that'll start clearing up within the next hour or two okay, okay. thanks, thanks very much. a lot then bye-bye bye
My disposition. Where is your disposition? she asked. I do not know, I replied. I do not think I have a disposition. Mother didn't think I had one either. I heard her discussing it with father through the keyhole. Evelyn, that's me, Evelyn seems to be totally without a disposition. And father replying, have I a clean shirt for tomorrow? He knew how to keep mother in check by ignoring her nonsense. Father was a rock and I loved him dearly. In the morning, watching him carefully as he shaved, I put it to him. Where is my disposition? He stopped shaving and looked straight at me. It's in the bureau, the left-hand drawer, and if I were you, I'd leave it there. He decorated my face with his shaving cream, then continued shaving, leaving me irritated but content. Three hundred fifty cities in the world, just thirty teeth inside of our heads. These are the limits to our experience. It's scary, but it's alright, and everything is finite. Only one record. This whole wide world where Jimi Hendrix sings husband and dad. Another Elvis will not come along, he got wasted. But it's alright, and everything is fine. Yeah, wasted, it's alright, everything. Daddy's arms will protect me from these women's charms. I'm six foot tall, but I can barely speak. My mind goes crazy when the taste is sweet. Well, we've known each other eight years and twenty days. It's terrifying. It's beautiful to me. Things have an end, but feeling is infinite. We're changing. But it's all right Everything is fine Yeah, change it It's all right Things are fine Shut up, will you? It's only nice, though. Well, I can't bloody play it, can I, if you'll sing out a tune? Sorry, love. Make me a cup of tea, will you? I need a cup of tea, though. Since Tony lost his legs... Yes, um, I want two sugars in it. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy, really. But you talk properly. Like I think in many ways uh, our relationship's actually improved. Well, hurry up, will you? I've got to get by the air done, have I? No, your hair's tomorrow, love. No, it's tomorrow. Your perm's tomorrow. I know! I fired with uh, Karen that I do pop the shop, genuinely hate her. Uh, that's why I've got my legs chopped off on the railway line. I did it to get her, you know, so she'd have to look after me. But now listen to her, you know. Do you want a cup of tea? Well, nothing's too much trouble, love. Now, what's she trying to do? Get old cunts of gold or something? Oh, I have to do everything for Tony now. Um, we do have a hoist for for the bath. I just wind up the side and then sort of hump him in. Just gently line down. The first time I dropped Tony in the bath, I really felt awfully. He was just in absolute agony, and um, I felt so so guilty. Sorry, Tony. 
That is painful to be dropped in the bath. But it is just about worth it for me. Because of the look on her face. You know, she looks so guilty that I reckon she's in more pain than I am. And that, that is good. The second time I dropped Tony, I, um, I'd have to say I felt a tingle. I did feel a bit warm. And, um, I now find myself actually looking forward to dropping him. It is so painful. And yet I'm thinking, how could I make this worse for her? You know, if I got my eye gouged out or the tap or something, she'd probably top herself. <laughs> Man, that would be funny. If someone said to me now to stop dropping Tony, I really would feel very, very unhappy about that. I don't think I could stop now. I could see the giant silent male crashing round the fun fair and kissing on the fleeting women's heads.
Right, can you open your mouth and say ah? Oh. Again. Try and keep your tongue down. Thank you. Oh dear. Not much of that throat left, is there? That's nearly all gone. Gone. Well, a throat should be much bigger than that. About this big. Looks like a smooth pink ball. It's just a hole. Yeah. It feels normal. Look, take the mirror. And see for yourself. Uh, uh, you see it? Uh, no pink ball there. Uh, Look, it's just a hole. You know what a whole way through should be? Gosh. No, oh, don't worry. We'll soon sort it out. A lot of people coming in like this at the moment. What I'll do is, I'll just thread the sides together, mm. make it much smaller so it'll get rid of itself gradually, and the rest of your throat should heal and should grow up into quite a big pink ball pretty quickly after that. Can we have you up on the table? Good. Now just open your mouth. This won't take a second. Just some discomfort for a few moments. Oh, nice and still. Okay, the other side. Nice and brave for me. Nearly done. And there. Now that should heal up completely in a couple of weeks. No, no. It, just a gargle a bit of water now and then. If you have to. What about food? I'm sorry? What about food? Mm, not sure. Um, I don't think you'll be needing much of that. You can pop back in a couple of weeks if you must. But I don't expect you will. Thanks very much. Yes, very good. Yes, very much. Okay, bye bye. <laughs>
If you angry so mad, ye tongue burst and mouth juice run, gall bladder bitter. When you sick so sad, you place your face in the puddle of a lay-by, waiting for lorry to splash it. And when you are inside the infinite misery jumper, pulling it over and over your head with no hope of ending, cause it replicating at the waistband, never get out, then e welcome. Oh, then e off welcome in blue jam, blue jam, blue jam. And bombed presents the jam. Visit us online at www.cookedandbombed.co.uk or chill.cream.org.